Hi, Jake Duesenberg with Action for Liberty here. I'm going to talk about the primer that's coming up on Tuesday. We'll do a little overview for you. But first of all, something big is happening. We want to do a live show, and we were testing some audio and some visual with uh, young Jesse, our MAGA guy, who's actually not here today. Uh, he's actually down in Waukesha, Wisconsin. Is it Waukesha, Dawson? Waukesha, Wisconsin, by Milwaukee. And he uh, cut us a video because... His, uh, his favorite guy on the whole planet is there today talking, Donald Trump. So let's play the video. Hey everyone, Jesse out here at the Trump rally in Waukesha, Wisconsin. I got my ultra MAGA shirt on because being MAGA is no longer enough. As you can see, all kinds of signs and shirts and hats are being sold. It's a big event here. Trump is endorsing Tim Michaels for governor and he's also endorsing Adam Steen, who is running against the Republican majority leader. Let's go up and see this crowd. And that's a problem Minnesota knows as well. All too well, a weak Republican leader of the House. So hopefully Wisconsin can be straightened out. Donald Trump's coming out here to let everyone know what's going on. Going to be a good time. Let me know if you're around too. I'll be happy to chat with you. Make America great again. There's so much excitement in that young guy. I, <laughs> I think it's so funny how much he loves Donald Trump. Um, Donald Trump's not doing too bad, in case you haven't noticed. A lot of his um, his choices for the primaries have done well, and as Jesse said, he's going to uh, actually endorse Tim Michaels today. So, um, yeah, Trump Trump's um, he's getting some wins. There's another big win coming up soon in Wyoming. Um Liz Cheney. Liz Cheney's got a real battle for her political career. And uh, she's now pulling out the big guns to do a campaign commercial for her. And let's watch this thing. In our nation's 246 year history, there has never been an individual who is a greater threat to our republic than Donald Trump. He tried to steal the last election using lies and violence to keep himself in power after the voters had rejected him. He is a coward. A real man wouldn't lie to his supporters. He lost his election, and he lost big. I know it, he knows it, and deep down, I think most Republicans know it. Lynn and I are so proud of Liz for standing up for the truth, doing what's right, honoring her oath to the Constitution, when so many in our party are too scared to do so. Liz is fearless. She never backs down from a fight. There is nothing more important she will ever do and lead the effort to make sure Donald Trump is never again near the Oval Office. And she will succeed. I am Dick Cheney. I proudly voted for my daughter. I hope you will too. I'm Liz Cheney and I approve this message. This to me is so crazy. Like, listen, Dick Cheney should be the most discredited guy on the, the whole planet. Like, this guy was behind getting us involved in Iraq, which was just a huge mistake. I don't know. Is there anyone even thinking Iraq was a good idea now? And I could say this. I'm an Iraq war veteran. It was a big mistake. This is the guy that led the effort to take us into Iraq and with just huge conflict of interest. He was a warmonger. He was a rhino. He was a big spending Republican. And now he wants to lecture us on who is the big sin for our nation. Like, this is unbelievable. And by the way, when it comes to Iraq war, Donald Trump was against it. So, anyhow, this is Dick Cheney. And so she's pulling out the big guns. It's really not going to matter. She's going to get her butt handed to her uh, in the primary. So speaking of primaries, I want to give an overview of what's going on in Minnesota. Um, and I think we'll do another show, hopefully on Monday, to just go into a little bit more detail. So there's a bunch of different races in Minnesota. And as I've said in emails and other videos, there is this uh, this thing happening right now. you got the establishment Republicans, and we'll say they're on the left here. So this is your right, my left. Um, and they are trying to keep their power. They're trying to stay in control. And the establishment Republicans don't want these grassroots conservatives. They just want the people that go to the Capitol and toe the line and do whatever they say. OK, so let's start with the number one race here that I think most people um, who follow us are uh, are probably paying attention to. And that's Senate District 54. I'm sorry, House District 54A. And that's with Eric Mortensen, the Liberty Champion of Minnesota, the best legislator in Minnesota. 
And the Swamp is going after him with a recycled candidate, Bob Luden, who Mort has beat twice, already twice in a primary and once in an endorsement. So um, this is who they're running against Mort. Bob's basically running to left of Mort saying, hey, I, I want to uh, get things done at the Capitol, which is not a good thing in the way that he's putting it. You know, I would argue Mort is getting things done at the Capitol. He's just getting things done in a different way, right? He's he's uh, shining a light on the corruption at the Capitol, and and Bob's just going to go there and do the same old thing that he did before, which is grow government. So that's a big race, uh, Eric Mortensen versus Bob Lewin. And Bob Lewin also just uh, was found guilty by court for um, uh, breaking campaign – or not campaign finance laws. Uh, what was it? Election fair practice laws or something like that? Um, fair election laws? I, I, whatever it is, he he distributed material saying that he was the endorsed candidate, which was false, and he's been found guilty for it. So he's got to pay a fine. All right, let's go. Let's stay in the house and let's go over to Stillwater, uh, where we have Mark Bashofsky versus Tina Riley. That's in House District 33B. That's just north of where I live, actually. And Mark, we just had on the show last week. Very good guy. Very conservative. Um, Won the endorsement by, I think it was like 82%. Tina Riley just got clobbered. But she got recruited by the establishment, and they want her to win because she'll probably toe the line and do whatever they say, whereas in Mark's going to be his own man. Um, So what are they doing? They're tagging Mark right now. And this is how insane it is. If you didn't see the show last week, watch it. Mark, Mark actually has been accused of being a Democrat. He's also being accused of being for vaccine mandates. The guy that literally started his political career because he said, I am willing to let a career of 20 plus years go as a respiratory therapist because I refuse to get the jab. And now we're accusing him of mandates. He led like the biggest rallies at the Capitol against vaccine mandates. And they got the audacity to lie about something like that. That just shows you how insanely stupid and uh, deceitful, what what am I trying to say? How manipulative the establishment is that just lie through their mouth so um that's mishovsky versus tina riley let's uh jump up to the minnesota senate this is where there's a lot of races okay um you know you got things like gene dornick down in southern minnesota albert lee um Senate district 23 i can't think it goes all the way up to like blooming prairie down to albert lee and then expands out um going against Lisa Hansen, who was one of the bar owners, uh, restaurant owners, who defied the governor's orders. You can go all the way up to the northern part of Minnesota. you got Dave Hughes, uh, who's an Air Force veteran, going up against Mark Johnson, a huge rhino up there, um, part of the uh, – he's I think he's the assistant majority leader in the Republican Senate. By the way, very bad voting record. If you want to know the voting records of guys like Gene Dornick – and Mark Johnson, you go to mnscorecard.com, and you can look right here. Mark Bashovsky, or I'm sorry, Mark uh, Johnson is a massive F rating uh, on our scorecard. And our scorecard's got to be the easiest scorecard for a Republican. If it grows government and shrinks liberty, we vote it down. We say it's a bad vote. If it expands freedom and reduces government, then we score it positively, and yet he fails that scorecard. And then Gene Dornick, also a failure. Um, You've got some incumbents uh, that have lost their endorsement. Uh, So in this case, we've got um, in Senate District 5, Paul Utke, Senator Paul Utke, lost the endorsement to Brett Bussman, an outsider, Army vet. And, uh, of course, these guys only care about endorsements when they get it. So when they don't get it, they challenge the endorsed candidate. So in this case, you got a race between Paula Uckey and uh, G- and um, um, and Brett Bussman. And there's another candidate, Anderson, I think is the last name, that's in the race. So there's a three-way race. And then you've got Natalie Barnes, Nurse Natalie Barnes, who uh, was against the mandates on the experimental vaccine. And she beat out Eric Pratt for the endorsement. And you can see the whole swamp skin behind Eric Pratt, even though Natalie Barnes is a Republican endorsed candidate. And she was also part of that um, data, um, the, the state party cutting off the data 
for, for candidates. So she was one of the, I think, five candidates. There might have been more, but that's what we were tracking about, five candidates. So Natalie Barnes against uh, Eric Pratt. Then you got some open seats uh, that are really fascinating. So in Senate District 10, which is, this is, uh, let's see here, Little Falls, which goes, I think it goes to like seven counties. So Little Falls, and it goes north a bit and way east. goes all the way to Malacca. Um, you got Nathan Wiesenberg, who we've known for a while, um, really grassroots conservative guy down to earth, um, I think would be a good senator, uh, versus uh, Jim Newberger, who's carpet bagged into the district. Um, I've heard that he's actually living at a church uh, or living at a church house or something like that just to move into the district. By the way, that's a big problem. There's a couple cases right now going in front of the Supreme Court about senators who have uh, carpet bagged into these districts and some of them might have actually not done it the right way and breaking the laws um, but I will I guess we'll have to have let the Supreme Court decide that so anyhow um, so you got Jim Newberger uh, and you can go to his scorecard I think in 2018 is when we had a score from him um, he used to be more conservative but like a lot of them they start dropping um, and then you've got uh, and then you got Steve Wenzel. Steve Wenzel, who is, who was a Democrat for a long time. Um, he, I think, got elected back in the 70s for the first time. Uh, decided to jump in at the very last minute. The guy, I think, is close to 80 years old. So I honestly, I don't understand why guys at that age would want to do something like that. So basically, you got Nathan Wiesenberg, real strong conservative guy. Jim Newberger, who uh, basically carpet bagged into the district. And then uh, Steve Wenzel, former Democrat, very old man who, um, I guess, uh, I guess uh, does he plan on running for the four years? I have no idea, but it just seems a little goofy to me. Um, then you've got over in my Senate district, Senate District 41, and a friend of mine, actually, uh, Tom DePal, who won the endorsement over there. Um, and of course, like me personally, I wanted to volunteer on Tom's because this is my Senate district, and I thought Tom's a great guy, and he clobbered. Representative Tony Jurgens, who's a really bad voting legislator. I think he's the second worst Republican voter in the Minnesota House. So he clobbers him in the endorsement. And then what does Tony Jurgens do? Oh, you know what? I, I don't give a crap about the endorsement process, so I'm going to run anyhow in the primary. Uh, he just got censored by the uh, Senate District 41 Republicans last, or it was two nights ago, I think. Um, the swamps, you know, behind Tony, uh, Karen Housley, who's a huge rhino. Uh, has endorsed him, of course. Um, but Tom DePel, uh, very conservative, business owner, all that kind of stuff. Um, I think he'd be a good senator up at the Capitol. So um, that's the race there. You got uh, one guy who uh, definitely votes bad versus uh, outsider, grassroots conservative. And I think, I think if I remember right, Tom was also part of the package of endorsed candidates that had their data center cut off uh, by the state party. So it's almost like these guys at the state party are just trying to uh, help out the, the swamp and get these guys, um, make sure they don't succeed. Um, and then last but not least, and there's more races, by the way. Um, you know, I, I know Larvita, who's running, and we've talked about Larvita a lot over the last couple of years. Uh, Ashley Berg's running. She's a uh, um, uh, nurse who was uh, very vocal in our group. Um, what did we call it? nurses for v choice or something like that whatever the facebook group was they wiped it off the internet <laughs> right um so there, there's a lot of other races out there too but um the other one i want to focus in on is just south of the twin cities northfield area lonsdale and that's bill liskey versus jake cordes and bill liskey is um you know dr bill liskey chiropractor in lonsdale uh won the endorsement um seems to be a pretty solid guy We've talked to this guy before um, on the issues, panned out, does well. Uh, Jake Cordes seems to be very much against this. There was this infamous picture of Jake Cordes wearing two masks. So he's a double masker with Anthony Fauci, getting his jab, right, being a good, being a good soldier for uh, the establishment, getting his jab. He's got the roll-up-the-sleeve sticker or something on him, and he's got a Pfizer T-shirt on. This is the guy that wants to be a Republican center. He's double masked, getting the jab, wearing a Pfizer T-shirt. So <laughs> this choker is, uh, he got beat. He got crushed in the endorsement, and he doesn't want to abide by the endorsement. So he's running against uh, Bill Liskey down in um, Northfield, Lonsdale area. So that's just a quick overview of these races. 
August 9th, so Tuesday, August 9th, is primary election day. What I would do is I would encourage everyone to go vote. If you've never voted before, it's a great opportunity to weigh in because essentially what happens is if you want to uh, get the right candidates or your favorite candidates on the November ballot, and let's just say you're a Republican in this case, maybe you want to vote in the Democrat primary because you live in Minneapolis and you don't really want Ilan Omar anymore, which I think is a very rational course. Not that her opponents are going to be much better, FYI, but um, but it, let's just say the Republican primary, if you vote in the Republican primary and you like one candidate over the other, uh, if you don't show up, you likely will have that other candidate, the one you don't like, face the Democrats in November. So it's a very important opportunity. And just if you've never done this before, in Minnesota, everyone gets the same ballot. But you, once you vote for somebody in a specific party, you have to stay in that party. So you can't go, well, I hate Ilan Omar here, but I like this race over here with Doug Wardlow. It doesn't work that way. you got to stay inside the, the Republican or Democrat or one of the pot parties. So you only, only can choose candidates in one party. Just want to make that uh, very clear. Um, you can find out where your polling location is by going to the Secretary of State's website, or you could Google find my polling place. You'll also see a sample ballot when you go to that link, um, which will be very helpful. And uh, once again, if you go to mnscorecard.com, you can see how these, these incumbents vote. So you can actually tr track their voting record. And once again, our scorecard, it's amazing. All, all the senators have failed our scorecard in the last couple of years. It's unbelievable. We have a big range of votes in the House, you have failures like Tony Jurgens, who who fails their scorecard, but you get guys like Eric Mortensen, who's got a hundred percent. So, and like Jeremy Munson, I think was a ninety-four percent or something like that. So, there's a wide range of um, scores in the House, but the Senate, they've all failed. And honestly, it's a little ridiculous. All they have to do is vote for less government and more freedom, and they can't even do that. So, go to mnscorecard.com, and you can learn how these incumbents have voted. If there's not an incumbent in the race, you basically got to listen to their messaging, right? How are they talking? Are they believable? I generally just go for the people that are from the outside, the people that aren't connected to the swamp. That's how I generally vote. But that's up to you. So please go vote on uh, Tuesday, August 9th. Go to the Secretary of State's website, and you can learn where your polling place is. That's all I got for you today. I wish we could have done a live show, but uh, Jesse was at the Trump rally, and it just was spotty. And quite frankly, he doesn't want to talk to us. He's He's already thinking in his head, what's it going to be like if Donald Trump looks at me? Maybe I could shake Donald Trump's hand for a second. Uh, so we'll be back hopefully next week with uh, a recap from Je Jesse Smith. Thank you very much for tuning in this week. Take care.